Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and I've played Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. It's true, you, the rumors are correct, but I'm not the only one who's played Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Adding some spice to these rumors. Yeah, yeah. I've been playing it as well. Yeah, and Xeon is here as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have, have I have I played Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania too? That that's a question only you can answer, Zeon. I have not, but uh. that does mean that I get to talk to you guys and find out how it actually is. Yes, exactly. So yes, we have played uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. This is essentially for, this is a preview, isn't it? We never call it a preview because. Whenever we call something a preview, nobody seems to care. So we, we, we changed the name and it seems to work. So yeah, um, we have played, I mean, I I've, I've think I've played pretty much all of it. I'm not saying I've completed it, but I've played everything that the game has to offer. The base game at the very least. Would you argue the same, John? I've played a buttload, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I can describe that as well. In fact, we've also played <laughs> together, haven't we, John? In person, yeah the, yeah, the best experience. That's the best way to play monkey ball on a on a sofa with your pals and just knocking back and having a good time. Okay, so let's um, let's. I tell you what, should we start off with the mini games? Because I think everyone's seen the main game. People go, "Whoa, that's the main game." There's still a lot of confusion about the mini games. So, what mini games are good? Well, every mini game from Monkey Ball Deluxe, which is basically Monkey Ball One and Two with a few other things, they're all back. They're all here. And there's a lot of them. It's not as much as like Banana Blitz, which had like 50, but there's around, I think 12? Is there 12 of them in total? I think there is 12. There's definitely 12 in Deluxe. So I guess my big question, just right off the bat, is do you feel like the good ones are here? That's, it's a really hard question to answer, Zeon. It and we'll, is, we'll get yeah. into this as we go on, but. Okay. Yeah, if everything is back, um, but it's a bit different. So Banana Mania was made in Unity, much like how Banana Blitz HD was made in Unity. But this one's done from scratch, so they're not just taking the original code from Banana Blitz like they did last time and putting it in this. So they've remade the original, uh, I guess the original Deluxe, entirely. Everything's done from scratch. The physics are new, the visuals are new. Wow. And because of that, things feel different. Um, and not necessarily in a bad way, but in some ways it does feel like a lesser experience. But I guess let's, let's start a bit more positive to begin with. Games like Monkey Bowling? They're still great. Like the special, yeah. the special like lanes you have where they curve around and start bouncing around. They're exactly as you remember. The pins may act a bit differently, but it still feels really, really fun. I re yeah, I really enjoyed monkey bowling. There's there are some quirks in the physics. They don't feel they don't as you said they don't feel the same. But they they are perfectly serviceable um, in these instances in bowling. Bowling is still ridiculous, and the special yeah the special one is insane. John and I just basically were beating our heads against a wall when it came to a particular one, which is just one big curve on expert <laughs> mode, and we just we just couldn't do it. It was it was a, 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 a grand old time. Yeah, and Monkey Race 2 is also really fun. Like all the courses are back from Deluxe, which is one and two again, and the, all the all the power ups you remember, like the giant ball, the speed up, the the ice cube, everything's back. It still feels really good, um, and a lot, yeah, a lot of these games are pretty much like you remember them. But we're kind of building up to something, which is probably the biggest one. The we one people are. usually remember Monkey Ball by. What is that, Alex? It's Monkey Target, John. And Monkey Target um, has had a bit of a, a tumultuous history, shall we say. Uh, but this, you know, sort of on the face of it, you look at it, you go down a big slope to begin with. You fling off the end and you've got to glide your way over to a target. There are items and stuff. It really is looking like it is the classic Monkey Target. But it, uh, appearances can sometimes be deceiving. No, no, not my monkey yeah. target. It really hurts the same. It's not bad. We're not saying it's bad in any capacity. No, no, no. It's it's it. You know, it's light years ahead of um, like Banana Mania's uh, monkey target and subsequent ones. It's it's still a decent time. Yeah, absolutely. And like in in later games like Banana Blitz, you shoot out of a cannon, which I thought completely got rid of any of the momentum and mm, the joy sure. of just flinging yourself. And that's back. You can, you, there's a there's a ramp now, just like the originals, and you run off it and you just start gliding. Like everything looks like it should. But there's one like really strange part of this, and I had to sort of investigate what was wrong with it. And basically, in the original, you'd fly off the ramp, and all your momentum would carry with you. You can move in the air and sort of position yourself before you open your wings again. Yeah. But in this one, 
It seems like there's some scripting with the physics when you fly off the ramp, and I walked off it at my slowest speed, and my character still somehow was flung in the air. <laughs> now granted, he, he didn't have the speed to carry over to the ramp, but still there was this really artificial sense of flinging, which was not in the original. And even when you're going at full speed, you still sort of lock into this animation for a bit, and it just it doesn't feel right when you right when you run off the ramp. It's not broken. It just it doesn't quite feel like you remember it feeling. Does it feel like the ramp is almost like a boost pad, like in Sonic or something a like little. that, or is it? That's a good way a, of describing it. A little it. bit, but almost too much like okay. that. If that makes any sense, it's um whilst the original, you felt like you were you, you felt like you were actually some sort of spherical object rolling down a hill and then you fly off and it was all you know that was actually real actually felt like real physics mm -hmm. when you put a monkey in a ball um but this <laughs> time th there is a sort of a, a jolt at the end it's sort of just uh, you you roll down and you're not rolling very fast um i swear just generally the maximum speed feels a bit slower when you're going down that and then when you get to the end you suddenly lurch forward and you've got then you've got enough speed to get to the target and it's it's not it's not awful because the actual flight controls i think generally on the whole i don't hate them in fact i think in some ways they're a little bit more uh reactive and responsive and reliable it's it's that jolt is the main thing that really gets my goat yeah like yeah as alex as alex was saying once you're in the air it's not bad it's different to the original there's a, there's a learning curve to how you fly but it's fine once you're there uh, one other weird thing, though, is there are fewer collectibles. Like, yeah. if you remember in the original, you fly through these 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 hoops of bananas. There's tons of them on the way to the target, and those things they are there. They're just in. They're there in a, a much lesser state, and they're, they're usually like closer to the target now that, rather than in the the fly up towards it. Meaning the actual flight is quite a bit more empty. It's more about just sort of managing your traject your trajectory towards the target. Um, Again, I don't think it's better than the original, but I do think it is a lot more fun than a lot of the sequels are. So it's not quite the return to form for Monkey Target, but it's definitely not the worst thing in the world. Sure. It, it, it almost sounds like that they that this sounds like a suitable alternative, I guess, if like someone, you know, someone wants to play Monkey Ball and they don't want to pull out a GameCube or a PS2 or something and they, you know, they don't have Deluxe and, and 1 and 2. And uh, do you think anybody who hasn't played the originals in a long time, do you think they're still going to notice these minor differences. It sounds like the ramp thing especially sounds fairly weird, I guess, but but do you feel that you kind of noticed more of these things because maybe you've played some of the older ones more recently or? That, that is, de yeah, that's definitely a factor, but I do think that jolt is gonna be something like, honestly, um, from the footage you guys are probably seeing, it, it, it's probably going to look like it's it's like a bit of the video has been cut out. It is literally just like a <laughs> wow. bit of the gameplay has been has been snipped away. It's it's really bizarre, and mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't break the game, but it just it feels like it, it doesn't feel like that was intended, and it's just kind of a byproduct of something else. Maybe I I don't I don't know, but um, it definitely doesn't feel. It doesn't feel right. And I'm sure people who've never played Monkey Ball before, they're probably wondering why we're we focusing so much on these mini games. And I think it's because in the original, the mini games felt like an extension of how the main game worked. Because the physics from there carried over to the mini games, and it just felt like everything was connected. Everything felt similar. Like how you how you roll in the ball feels like how you roll in the ball in the main game. And because of that, everything is just as fun, if not more so. Like I spent way more time playing Monkey Target multiplayer. Then I probably did spend I'm um, playing the main game. Yeah, in Monkey I, Ball 1 I, and 2. Think I did exactly the same thing. The mini sure. games. I'd play with yeah, I'd it, play with my friend George. We'd play this to death and yeah, you play the single player sometimes, and sometimes it was quite refreshing to do that because most of the time we were just playing the mini games. Absolutely. And I think that's why we love like Monkey Target and Monkey Race and Monkey uh, Fights, I suppose. Like they're they're really fun mini games. And a lot of the, the later ones, like we've got like Monkey Boat and Monkey Shot and Monkey Soccer, like, they're, they're fine. They're not quite the extension of the main game, though, in the same way that Monkey Target is. Like, they're, they're, they're still good, they're not bad, but there's definitely a, a, a tier list of party games, and Monkey Target is right at the top. Absolutely, yeah. And so I think this, um, really, the expectations were very high for this, and I think that they... I wouldn't say they've completely missed the mark, because I do think it's still a fun time, but it's just, ah, you know, sort of, if you're going to remake it, you've got to at least make it equivalent or better than the original. And I don't think it is. Yeah. 
I will say though, this is the most fun Monkey Ball has been since 2002. And, and they've been, I've played every single sequel there is. Uh, they've they've sometimes got it right, like um, Banana Splits on the Vita had some good ideas, but it's never been as fun as the first two. And this one, I know, it, I know it's based on the first two, but it comes close to feeling like them, which is something no other sequel has done. There's some weird quirks we noticed in Monkey Golf, specifically the mini gate. well, uh, the, the mini golf one, but also the other one. Um, so you got loads of modes, and that's one of the great things about the mini games here is there are loads of options, and that is fantastic. Arguably, you could almost argue too many options, but I will take that over not enough any day of the week. But um, there's a weird thing in Monkey Golf where going down a slope, it's, it's almost like you're going downstairs in some <laughs> ways. It's really weird. It doesn't quite behave as, you, as it should. It's not a smooth rolling action. It's sort of a step, 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 step. And um, also... When you, like your when, ball when you is actually a get... square or like like a you know a cube a like a bit like that yeah Weird. a bit like that yeah, okay there's judder yeah and then when you get into the hole you get a you get into the hole and then all of us there's another jolt just like monkey target so there's the animation playing saying ah you got you got a birdie or whatever and it's just like play and then suddenly ah, you just fly straight up in the air and it's really it's just jarring it's not that, that's like really not a big deal but it just kind of smacks of not as much care as I would hope. I don't, I don't want to sound too negative because the no. rest of the game is definitely it, it feels wrapped in care. The, the yeah. menus look gorgeous. There's so many unlockables. You can customize your characters to a ridiculous extent. It feels like there's so much polish and care put into the actual package itself. It's just the engine. Like the original engine is what powered F-Zero GX. It's, it's so <laughs> flexible. Yeah, that's it's right. 60 FPS. It's 60 FPS, it looks great, it feels great, the physics are amazing. And then you're going to Unity, where they've tried to recreate it. It's not the same. Uh, and I think it's just, it's such a hard level to beat with, with such a great engine they had originally, and they can't quite do it. But there are so many great like surrounding elements. Like you can play as a little thing from Monster Rancher, which is some weird anime thing from the right. late 90s. You can play as that in this game. Yeah. Granted, it's DLC, but you can. Um, it's There's so much in here that's going to give you replayability. And I guess we'll talk a bit more about it in a second, but there's, there's way more you can do than just playing the main game in here. Before we, um, I, I'd like to just one last thing before we talk about, um, before we move away from the mini games. Xeon, as an American, what is, what is the term in baseball when you hit the ball, but you hit it too far, <laughs> oh too far left or right, you know, so you don't actually hit it within the parameters of the field. Is that a foul? What is that called? W then why in Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania does the does the announcer say fall? He goes fall. Is it, it and it's not like a Fallout reference either, like Fallout. No, no it's just no. It's it's pronounced differently. <laughs> the word foul comes on screen and he goes fall. <laughs> I I don't know. I I. We were flabbergasted. We were because neither of us had played the baseball one, and then it just came up and it's like oh foul. He went fall, and we were like. Is, is, is that how it's said in American English? Have <laughs> right. we just been getting it wrong all this time? Right. Well, I wonder if there's if I wonder if there will be a difference when I play the uh, the the North American, the U.S. version of the game. I imagine it'll be the same, but <laughs> I imagine it'll be the same. Yeah. Um, but yes. So that's the mini games. Um, the main game. The main game overall. The physics, as we said before, the physics do feel a little bit different and certainly i very recently played monkey ball one and two coming into it i was a bit like my muscle memory wasn't quite there but honestly after about 10 minutes it, it just my brain sort of just rewired itself ever so slightly and i was having an absolute blast I, the the main games are just as good as they've ever been and pretty much all of these levels have been recreated to a ludicrously fine degree mm -hmm. You can still exploit them in amazing ways too. Yes! And uh, you, you accelerate faster, which can make some of the skips a bit easier. And I've realized not every single skip works in the way that you might remember. But I think there are new ones in here too, actually. So there's definitely different ways to break them compared to what you remember. Not everything's going to work, but you'll probably find new ways to do it. And there's still th those levels you can just walk off and fall into the goal from a thousand feet in the air. You can still do that. That's great stuff. You can still um, go on a ramp and increase your speed and make your way and just bounce off and go into the goal. All that stuff still works for the most part, and it feels great. Uh, and you know, that's, that's part of the joy of Monkey Ball, is trying to beat these levels as fast as you can. 
And one way that's really incentivized is the 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 leaderboards. And right now, there's no one else on the leaderboard for just playing the challenge modes. So I, ge I guess I have the world record for that. And I think <laughs> yeah. you have the world record for a story mode, Alex. I the do, best in the yeah. World. world one, I've got the world record. Um, and the thing is, is that there are other people on that leaderboard at the moment. Uh, uh, three, including myself, but I'm still number one, baby. Better take that, everyone. Um, one thing I was in two minds about, actually, is the live system. And I feel like lives were definitely a remnant of their arcade roots, because this, yeah. was, this was literally an arcade oh, game. Sure. But they had one thing I really did like in the originals, and that was the extra levels at the end. So in, in the originals, basically, if you finish without using a continue, you go on to like five or three extra levels, depending on your, or even more than that, if you're doing the, the hard mode. But you, you go on to some extra levels after. But now because there are no continues and no lives, those extra levels are just part of the core run Ooh, when you're doing challenge mode. Not and quite. Yeah? I'm yeah, pretty sure they there, are. There's a, there's a helper mode which allows you to slow down time, you get double the time on the uh, clock oh, right. and everything, yeah. and that allows you to deal with much trickier stages in a much more manageable way. If you use that feature, you cannot do the uh, extra stages. Oh, That's true, yeah. Okay. But it, it, again, though, you can just keep falling as much as you want. You can keep trying as much as you want, and you're yeah. still going to get to those challenge levels. And I feel like that does take away a little bit. But one area where I think that kind of balances out is the time trials. Because in that, you're still trying to get through it as fast as you can. So when you fall, there is still a punishment for falling, because you're going to lose that time. And I think that's where a lot of the fun comes through. Like, if you love the originals and love trying to get through as perfectly as you can and feel like having too many retries kind of takes away from the challenge, I think this is where you're going to have that fun. And I was, I was retrying the casual Monkey Ball 1 mode again and again, just to do it as fast as I possibly could. And that's, that's, of course, the easiest one you can do. But those extra levels are still a bit challenging, and doing them without falling is, is still quite tricky. And I think that's where, that's where the expert players are going to have their fun. They may find that there, there's something missing in the challenge mode, but that is definitely going to sort of make up for that. I agree with your sentiments, but at the same time, I don't miss lives in the slightest. Um, I think that they really were kind of a remnant of the past. And the fact that there is still, you know, sort of some of these levels in Super Monkey Ball, just, you know, one and two, are still brutally difficult. And I think that it's that kind of that one level to use a trope. And so things like um, Catwalk is a new one that was in Deluxe that I wasn't aware of before. That is an absolute nightmare. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to do everything perfectly and then fail at that hurdle and then not be able to do <laughs> the extra stages. I mean, I don't think that would ever happen because I don't think Catwalk is in a standard list of, um, uh, uh, in standard challenge mode or anything. But even then, I, I don't, I don't lament it in the slightest. The lives, as you say, were a hangover from the arcade days. And I think that it, it opens things up. But even then, if you, you know, sort of really aren't familiar enough with the game and you aren't able to do the level in quote unquote the expected way when it comes to you know speed and everything and you have to use the helper mode that's when you sacrifice that well it's not even a sacrifice it's it's a reward for doing things in the normal way and i honestly no i i don't miss lives at all and the helper mode does rock i mean that if you're a new player or someone who has uh, problems with accessibility. This is this is really going to be great. Yeah, because um, you can enable it whenever you want. It also suggests you enable it if you fall out a lot. You can ignore it if you want to, but it's going to say, "Hey, you've you've died a few times on this level." It does. Would you like the help? It mode? does slightly annoy me that it keeps telling me that on a hard level, and it's like, no, uh, I mean, no, no, no. I, I, sorry, I worded that poorly. It only asks you once per level, um, but as in like uh, once per level load, as it were. But you know, sort of you have a hard level it asks you you say no and then eventually you do it after 15 tries or something you go on to the next level you die five times it asks you again it's like no just let me turn it off i don't want <laughs> yeah. it i don't need your charity game <laughs> but that this lets you slow down time by pressing the l button it shows you arrows to get to the goal just, isn't it the uh, r it button like, uh, i think you do either l or r uh, it's, it's arbitrary, but you know, you know, we'd get comments yeah. if we didn't at least mention it. Yes. It also doubles your time as well. So there's lots of things that are going to make this level easier for for those who struggle, and that's that's great. That stuff is amazing. Love and it. You don't need to use it either. You can ignore it completely if you don't want to do it. So as far as the like replayability goes of of levels, and I know you guys said that there's like tons of collectibles and things like that. 
how are you rewarded for playing the game to get these new like cosmetics and things like that? You get points and you get points in a variety of different ways, like by completing levels. I think even just playing uh, mini games, I think maybe you get some points. Not many, nice. but a few. Okay. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> you do. I can I can confirm. Ooh. It's true. Ooh. Um, but the you get these points and then you can spend them at the point shop. And at the point shop, you can unlock things like um, you can unlock cosmetics. You can unlock new characters like Sonic and Tails. Um, you can unlock uh, new game modes as well. Like you can, uh, there's one uh, called the Golden Banana Mode, which you can just unlock in the game. We thought it was um, a weird exclusive to a special version oh, of the yeah, game. Yeah. I've already unlocked it. Uh, there's also Dark Banana Mode. And there's there's loads of unlock. There's so much to unlock, but then you know, sort of, you can't just you could just play the same levels over and over again. But that's not going to be your best bet. What's your best bet is to do the missions, which are basically just supplementary objectives for each level, and also things like you know, sort of playing the mini games. You know, sort of, oh, you played Monkey Race, you played every level, have have, have some points. And, but then there's things like, you know, sort of completing a level within a certain time period. And each, every single level has like a minimum of like three additional objectives. And usually one of them is just complete the level. One of them is often complete it perfectly, which just means use it without using the helper function, which seems like a bit of a grandiose term. Um, but then you also get things like you have to get 30 bananas and complete the level, or you have to complete it within a certain time limit, or you have to get through the, the green goal or the red goal and things like that. And it really ramps up and it forces you to go back and replay these levels in a way that I probably wouldn't do. You know, things like grabbing bananas, I generally mm -hmm. ignore them. So it's, and th there's even some like very special ones like, I can't remember the level, but there was a, a mission just called, um, like, s a full steam ahead or straight through or something like that. And I think it's just literally from holding forward and just trusting that you'll make it all the way <laughs> to the end, you know, without changing direction. Mm -hmm. And I, I got that first time because I looked at the stage and I was like, I think I remember you can just go right through this one. And I could. And so there's, you know, there's clear incentive there. And even if you were to go into the missions, little hints for how else you can complete the level. And I really like that. Yeah. And the shop system is absolutely great too. I mean, I was looking at the prices for these characters and they are actually really cheap. You can get yeah. the full roster very oh, quickly. Oh yeah, good. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. I mean, with, with Banana Blitz HD, to get Sonic, you have to get to World 9. And to get different costumes, you have to beat every single world without dying once. So that was quite... Uh, a long grind, especially for a game I didn't love. But in Banana Mania, you can just buy them. And um, I think you start with like maybe 3,000, 2,000, something like that. But characters are 5,000. And I did a run of the Monkey Ball 1 casual mode, which I think I said a few times. And I think I finished that with like 10,000 points, which gave me enough to buy two wow, characters. Wow, yeah. Was it, and was I, it I Sonic bought, and Tails? I bought Classic Tails, and then I bought Beat. Oh! So not, not Sonic and Tails, oh. but I got the full roster within maybe half an hour? Um, it didn't take long at all. And, um, of course, with the full roster, they, they've said this on their Twitter, but you can't use them in the party games. It's just the main game, which is a bit oh, of a letdown. Oh, really? Down, but it, it makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't understand fully why, because there's, as far as I can tell, there's no distinct difference. Um, you know, like, there's no additional animations, really? I don't okay. think. It's all just the standard, you know, sort of, oh, I won, which you get at the end of the level anyway, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, th there are animations specific to the characters, but it's not... I, I mean, I, I guess it would have been... A bit, it, 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 I guess it, it doubles the roster. More, more than doubles the roster with more, all these more characters. More than doubles the roster, characters. yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like a bummer almost, considering that some of the characters you have to pay for. Like, I could see people going out there, and, and I don't. we don't need to dwell on this either, but, um, but I could see, you know, buying all of the characters maybe to play with your friends. Like, if, you know, we all you know, had an office that we played together and I could see us buying Hello Kitty and and uh, um, and Morgana and stuff just to have on like a, a, you know, the system that we all play on. So we could play multiplayer with those characters, but knowing that they're just single player, that's kind of weird. That, that I don't know. Yeah, it is a bit weird. And you also can't customize them as well. So you can customize um, Ai Ai, Gong Gong, Mimi, Baby, Yan Yan, Doctor, but not any of the actual other characters. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's definitely an imbalance between the core cast and the extra cast. But it's still it's still nice that they're there though. 
so considering that you've you've now played as a human character, at least I'm assuming that you unlocked. I mean, I know you said you unlocked Beat, but did, John, have you played as Beat yet? Of course I have. Yeah. So how does it feel playing as a human character in a world of monkeys? Like it's bizarre. <laughs> there, there are more non-monkey characters than there are monkey characters now when you when you bring in the dlc characters oh sure um, oh come it, on it feels... we're, we're all primates at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> are, are the dreamcast saturn and game gear primates um yes as it happens <laughs> <laughs> cyborg but um yeah it feels weird at first but after a while it's just like yeah this is life this everyone can be a monkey yeah. ball now uh it, it, it feels amazing in a very weird way, and I wish that there were more Sega characters. I guess we can confirm this because we're, you know, we've played the game. Everyone that they've announced so far is already in the game, so there's no other characters outside of possible DLC sure. announcements. So, uh, yeah, so we've got like, um, well, we've got we got Beats, we got the mon the two monkeys from Monkey Ball 3D. Yeah, <laughs> they they didn't actually confirm that they were playable. They just said they were in the game. Yeah, it's um, what is it? Uh, Jam and Jet. They are That's them. they're fully playable in the uh, main game of the ranking challenge. Yeah, they're hilarious because they they were in Monkey Ball 3D, but they were just in I think like two party games or something mm. like that. So they were barely in it, and they're like, yeah, bring bring them along. People Why not? Them. Why not? Yeah, and that, that feels like a lot of the extras. Why not? They they've poured so many extra things you can do. And it really does add a lot of care into the game. And this this sounds tiny, but I love customizing the characters. I love dressing them up and customizing their balls. It it, <laughs> it just feels Sorry. Don't linger on that one. <laughs> uh, it just feels it feels like an extra layer and it does add some personality to the game. I really love the fact that I've given Gong Gon like a red semi Hawaiian shirt with bananas on it and sunglasses. It just it speaks to me. There there is one thing and it's it's super minor. Um, and it, but it really irritates me. The cutscenes from Super Monkey Ball 2, they're now being told with like slideshows and not even properly rendered. Oh no! It's it's not it's not great. And the thing is, is that they it, it these cutscenes, they are fine. They don't matter, but it does kind of take away a bit of the the overall polish. And they really treat it like it's almost like sort of a baby program. I mean, John, I'm sure you can attest to that. Yeah, all, all baby programs, they've all got monkeys in them, and I can't. <laughs> no, no. It, uh, yeah, it definitely is that sort of style, and it does feel a little bit condescending almost. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I guess they wanted to have Doctor and Yan Yan in there, but I wish they, they, they just did some 3D like animations like the first game did, or the second game did even, but yeah. Yeah. But apart from that, you know, that, that's a minor thing, but it's one thing that does stick out. The story mode doesn't feel as much like a story mode anymore. It just feels more like Monkey Ball 1, which is fine, but I feel like a little bit of something's been lost. Yeah, and there's definitely a lot in here still, though. There's like over 300 stages, there's 12 oh, yeah. party games, there's all this customization, there's a banging new theme song. <laughs> um, it is banging. There's a ton of great stuff in there. And, uh, yeah, we can complain about what's missing, what's lacking, and I think there's definitely stuff we can criticize when the review comes to it, but overall, I'm, I'm really happy with this game, and I'm having a great time with it. Me too, I'm chuffed to bits. Do you, do you have any final questions, Zeon? I do, I have two questions. One Ooh. is... Can you unlock the Cooking with I.I. I episodes within the game? Oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I, I don't. I, they are available on YouTube. Um, you remember the days of like unlocking videos in, I feel like that happened in like Sonic Mega Collection. Well, actually, yeah, the Sonic Boom yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, video was in there. Yeah, Sonic, just, you unlock boom, something like Sonic, that, you watch boom, it forever, Sonic, and now boom. you can sing it 20 years later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so, so that's not a thing. But then two is, can you jump? Yeah, so there was, yeah. there was a jump in the debut yeah. trailer, and people were freaking out about it. Um, and then on their Twitter, they confirmed that jumping is just an accessibility option. You don't have to Interesting. use it. Interesting, okay. But, but what, what's confusing about that, actually, is it's, it is an accessibility option, but it's one that you buy, so it's in the store. And it's, it's not the most expensive thing you can get in the store. It's like wow. 30,000 points or something Yeah, like that. it's the most expensive thing. I haven't unlocked it, because it feels like a waste of points to me, because... I, I don't like the jump. It breaks levels. And it's it kind of goes against, in my mind, what the entire point of Monkey Ball is, which is about momentum and using the environment to your advantage. If you can jump, you can just bypass so much stuff. And bypass yeah. you can bypass stuff normally, but you have to do so intentionally and with skill rather than just... Huh! I think there's still a meddling fun to that. I mean, 
With, with Banana Blitz, I, sp I think the, the big problem with Jump there was levels were designed around the jump, and so you were incentivized to jump all the time. Mm. I think if you just want to just meddle around and jump, I, I don't think there's that much harm, but it's not something I would I would do as like my preferred way to play. No, I think there's going to be some ridiculous like um, speed running and certainly like TAS speed running. Uh, I just realized that that's a bit of a, uh, that's a bit tautological, but um, you know, that people are going to be doing TAS runs and stuff like that. With the jump, that is going to bust, that's going to bust things wide open. Yeah. It almost feels like the developers like hid that jump behind the in-game, not, I don't want to say paywall because that's not what it is, but you know, <laughs> they're hiding it back there. So that way like players just won't use it unless if they really, really have to, or if they're curious enough. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad it's not there by default and just, oh, do you want to turn it on or off? Because that mm -hmm. would, it, it would kind of, yeah, it would incentivize people to just turn it on and it would break certain levels to a, a ludicrous degree. Yeah, it's it's good to look at it as an accessibility option, though, because I imagine there will be yeah. people out there that just really want to play that way. Because, you know, like like you guys have said, like there hasn't been a proper monkey ball game that we, that we could recommend in years. And so there's so many people out there that have probably only played monkey ball with a jump option. And uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I, I can't yeah. be mad that it's here, but it, it was, was, it, was, was right. it was fun. But yeah, I, it, it wasn't it wasn't monkey ball prime this really is no. way closer and i'm honestly i'm really thrilled with it. it definitely it's not a perfect package but it's blooming good yeah and one other really quick thing banana blitz hd which is a game that was built around motion control on the wii did not have any gyro in the remaster even though the switch could um but this one does you can play oh, yeah. entirely with gyro if you I, want I've to never, i've never tried wow. it <laughs> Yeah, neat. You know, it's just, you know, it's one of those things that, like, you, you probably won't play the game that way, but it's there. It's another way to play. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad that you guys have been having a good time with it. It, uh, it's. Yeah. I know there's a lot kind of uh, riding and rolling on this game, you know, in a in a way. <laughs> and, uh, I know. Uh, please don't uh, don't fire me. And uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're having a good time with it. <laughs> Well, there you have it. That's um, that's our thoughts, our early impressions of Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania on the Nintendo Switch. Also, it runs pretty damn well, probably should say that. Um, but yeah, we'll be having the review coming out when it's ready um, and when we're allowed to. <laughs> um, but that's that's everything for the moment. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you roll towards that subscribe button and burst right through it without jumping and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely nintendo related content thank you again for watching bye bye gyro only speedrun oh, i'm a banana <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>